Hey guys, Mark Heath here and welcome to the first video in a new series where we're going to be solving the challenges from the adventofcode.com website. Now if you haven't come across this website yet, I recommend you check it out. Basically, um, in December of 2015, every day you get a programming challenge set you and you can get up to two gold stars on each challenge by solving parts A and B of each day's challenge. And as you can see, we're just on day five here. I've managed to solve them all so far. And this is a real um, cool website. It's been created by a guy called Eric Wastel. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name. Um, it's not a .NET programming site. You can attempt the challenges in any language. But in this uh, video series, I'm going to show you how I solved each challenge in both C Sharp using Link. And also I'll show you in F Sharp. And the reason for showing you um, with Link is that um, early in 2016, I hope to publish a new Pluralsight course um, in which I'll be showing uh, some ways to do more effective Link. And the puzzles on this site are really appropriate for solving using Link. And I also wanted to show you some F-sharp as well. I certainly don't consider myself to be an F-sharp expert, but actually, if you're learning a new language, then solving little puzzles like this is a great way of improving your skills. So let's get started and we'll look today at challenge number one. So if we click on the bottom line of this uh, really cool looking Christmas tree, we'll see puzzle number one. And in puzzle number one, basically Santa is going up and down in a lift um, delivering presents and he gets instructions in terms of parentheses. If he gets an open parenthesis, he goes up a floor. And if he gets a closing parenthesis, he goes down a floor. And one of the nice things about this website is it gives you some very simple test inputs so that you can test your algorithm to make sure that you've got the right answer. But you also get your own personalised input. And so as you can see here, you get a link to this. I've got this huge long list of opening and closing parentheses and I need to work out what floor all of these instructions are telling Santa to go to. And as I said, these instructions are different for each person, which means that you can't steal my answer. Even though you can see it here on the screen, my answer was 74. If you create yourself account, your answer will be different. So how can we solve this challenge? Well, actually, if you've been following my blog, you'll know that I've been setting some link challenges, and this one is very similar to a challenge I set a while ago, which was about counting votes. In that challenge, you had a series of yeses and noes, and you wanted to see who'd won the vote. And the way to do it was to turn each yes into a plus one, and each no into a minus one, and then add them all together. Well, we can do exactly the same technique to solve this problem. If I load up LinkPad, and LinkPad is a really fantastic utility. If you haven't checked it out, then you should do. It's great for solving little puzzles like this, and... Um, Particularly if you buy a license, the license isn't very expensive, but that will turn on all kinds of cool features like syntax um, auto-completion and the ability to use to do debugging or to use NuGet packages. And so you can see here in LinkPad, I've copied in all of Santa's instructions from my daily input, this huge long list of parentheses. And then I've simply been able to call links sum method on this because in C sharp a string is also an I enumerable of characters and so for each character if it's an opening parenthesis I turn it into a one otherwise it's a minus one and I sum those together and so let's run this and as you can see the answer is 74 nice and simple how do we do the same thing in F sharp well it's very similar in F sharp um, we have our list of parentheses and then we use the sum by uh, method in the seek module and we pass in a very similar function that says if it's an open parenthesis then one else minus one you could do pattern matching here but I don't think it makes a huge difference and fortunately F sharp and C sharp agree on the same result so that's part one of the puzzle part two is a little bit more tricky let's have a quick look at part two. So in part two, if we scroll down, we see that now we want to find when is the first time that Santa enters the basement. 
and the basement is floor number minus one. And it tells us we need to find the position of the first character. And it's very helpful here that we're given a couple of examples because if we just get a single closed parenthesis, then that means he goes straight to the basement. But the correct answer wouldn't be zero, it would be one. So it's, it's not zero based counting here, it's one based counting. So we need to make sure we take that into account. So how can we solve this? Well, let's head back to Linkpad. I'll just close the results here and I'll show you the approach I took with C sharp. Now, don't worry too much about this. I'm going to comment out most of this to start with. And the first thing I did was passed my input string into a scan method. Now, this isn't part of link. This is actually part of more link. And more link is a really fantastic NuGet package that provides a number of really useful extension methods for link that aren't included in the standard library. And with Linkpad, it's possible to add a reference to a NuGet package. If you press F4, it will bring up the dialog showing you the NuGet packages that you have got installed and you can add more by clicking Add NuGet here. As I said, I think this is only available if you've paid for a license. Now, what does the scan method do? Well, it will return exactly the same number of elements. Well, actually, it won't. It will return one element for every element in the input sequence but it'll thread an accumulator through. So what does that mean? Well, we start off with the number zero, that's this first um, parameter and it's called the seed parameter. But then for every element in the series, we calculate a new value based on F, which is the current floor, that's my accumulator that I'm threading through, and D, the direction that we're going in, that's the character in the input string. So if direction is go up a floor, we're going to add one to our accumulator. And if it's go down a floor, we're going to subtract one. So if I run this, you'll see I get a sequence of floor numbers. Santa's on floor zero, then he goes to floor one, two, three, four, five. Then he goes down a floor to floor four. And as you can see from here, I've got five opening parentheses and then a closed parenthesis. So that's great. And we could just look through this and try and find where the first minus one is. In my input, it's a very long time before Santa gets anywhere close to the basement. But if we just said find the first element in this sequence with a value of minus one, well, it would just find a minus one and we'd have no idea what the index was. So I need to pass through the, the index of each element. And so I'm going to do that by chaining on a select method which takes both the value in the sequence, which is now a sequence of floor numbers, and the index in the sequence. And this is a standard overload of the select method that has two parameters. And I'm just going to put them into an anonymous object. So let me show you what we get when we run that. OK, we get the same sequence of floor numbers here on the left, but the index that, of the command that takes us to that floor number here on the right. And so now, if I say dot first, where the floor number is minus one, we can see that it's index 1795. That's really nice and easy. The scan method is one to bear in mind if you ever need to thread some kind of accumulator through a sequence, but still get out individual values for each step in the original sequence. And of course, to just get the final value, which is the solution to the problem, we can say dot index at the end. So let's quickly look at how I solved this in F sharp. I did it very slightly differently. I took, again, the sequence of, of inputs, and I first of all just mapped them to ones and minus ones. So if I run this without those last two steps in the pipeline, and for some reason, my computer seems to be compiling F sharp really slowly at the moment. But eventually, we'll just see it's now a sequence of ones and minus ones. And there we have it. Now we can pass this into the scan method. And F sharp has already got a scan function in its sequence module. 
And what we're doing is we're saying that the method, the starting seed value is zero, so Santa starts on floor zero, but the way to combine the seed with the next value in the sequence is to just add them together. And in F sharp, by putting plus in brackets, you're saying that the plus operator is like a function that just adds two numbers together. And so if we run that, we get, like we got in C sharp with our more link scan method, we get a sequence of all the floor numbers that Santa visits. There we have it. And fortunately, in F sharp, we don't need to do that trick where we use anonymous objects to add an index to every value. The sequence module has got a handy find index function. And so we'll just say find me the index of whichever item in the list has got a value of minus one. And again, thankfully we don't have to add one to this value because zero, the starting floor, comes out of scan as the first element. So let's run this. Okay, so that's, the, that's how you can solve the first day's problems in Advent of Code. Hopefully um, I'll do some more videos and we'll solve some more of them, assuming of course that I actually can solve all of these puzzles in Advent of Code. And of course I always find when I do things like this that people know better ways to solve the problems than I do. So if you know a better way of solving these problems, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it.